Hello and welcome to the Humber UTC revision sessions for R109 Engineering Materials, Processes and Production. This is a level 1 and level 2 Cambridge National Award Certificate in Engineering Manufacturing. Notice that it's level 1 and 2 and you're going to be looking for at least 36 marks on this paper to get yourself your level 2 qualification. Okay, this is an introduction, so we're just going to have a quick look at the paper. Um, you've got the usual information with regards to your candidate, forename, and your surname, centre number, and your candidate number, which is a four digit number which you'll find on your desk. Read the instructions. Every single exam paper may have slightly different instructions. Black ink. HB pencil, it should be used for graphs and diagrams only. Complete the boxes above with your name and your centre number and your candidate number. Answer, this is really important, all of the questions. And if you're not sure, at least have a go. Write your answer to each question in the space provided. Do not write on the barcodes, that's these things here. They actually identify you to the examiners so the paper gets split up and it goes to different markers. So it's important that you don't damage that barcode. Total number of marks of the paper is 60. Remember I was talking about the fact that you need at least 36 plus to get the level 2. So that's really important to keep bear that in mind. Number of marks for each question is given in square brackets at the end of the question or part of a question. Dimensions are in millimetres unless stated otherwise. This document consists of 12 pages. Any blank pages are indicated. Your quality of written communication will be assessed in questions marked with a star. So you've got to watch out for that, that asterisk. That will be a six mark question, which is really important. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the questions. There should be, so this is what you should do when you get into these ones, is have a look through the paper very quickly and just see. So we've got six questions. That's question one. Question two, I won't read them out yet because we'll be coming back over. But as you go through, you should have a quick read just to see if you recognise anything. Get your brain thinking about your manufacturing processes. Put yourself in the sort of right frame of mind. There's a question about a lathe. Okay, that'll be useful. And you've got a labelling diagram. That could be a good question. If you're looking out for questions that you think you're going to find easy, they're, they're good places to start to build your confidence. Oh, CNC, I know what that is, Commuting Numerical Control. Question 6 begins on page 10. That's question 5. There's question 6. Ah, look. There's my, there's my asterisk. That's my 6 marks. That's my quality of English. So I'm going to have to think about the sort of the writing that I'm going to do with that question. Please don't write on this page. Right, so that is the exam paper. So take a minute and familiarise yourself with the exam paper at the beginning so you've got an idea of what's going to be happening to you. Right, so you have a look through the paper. Don't just dive straight in and start writing answers down. Take your time and think and read the questions carefully. Okay, let's go through this then. Many different materials are used in the manufacturing of engineered products. Now you notice I'm actually using my pen to go through and look at each word in the question. Name two common ferrous metals. Okay, so this is where you need to be using your, hopefully your revision, so that you can remember what is a ferrous metal. So, iron. I'm just going to do a little note to myself here. Iron and steel. I know that they are ferrous metals because the, the symbol for iron, if, you, if you've done your um, chemistry and your physics and your sciences, the symbol is Fe, ferrous metal. So a common one. Now we don't like the word iron by itself because there are different types of iron. We like to use the term cast iron. And by the same token, there are lots of different types of steel, so a common one for us would be mild steel. There we go, you see. But this, this gets me thinking about what sort of revision should you have been doing for this question? What sort of 
um, activities and you've been introduced to one in the classroom and it's one that I would encourage you to continue in preparation for the examination and that was the Toads FM which we'll go through in a minute and, and the reason that this is good because this is these are the properties of materials but we start talking about reasons here so it says for example give reasons for the saucepan so you really what properties does the material have to make it good for that particular activity or that particular property for that particular product so if we look here explain giving one example what is meant by the term non-ferrous and this is important they're talking about an alloy not just a non-ferrous metal but particularly an alloy okay and they're looking for an explanation they're looking for three marks okay so you know one two three parts to your answer really so I need to show the examiner that I understand and I've read the question so I'm going to write non ferrous means well, this is ferrous which means it contains iron so non ferrous means does not contain iron so that's going to be one part of the answer Now the other part is it's showing that I understand what an alloy is. An alloy is a and an alloy is a mixture of two or more metals. Which combine to give improved properties. So I've done the non-ferrous bit, and I've done my alloy bit. Give and now this is the bit. Give one example. Brass is copper and tin. A non ferrous alloy. That's about as full an explanation as I can give. So I've answered it's non-ferrous. Non-ferrous means not containing iron. It's an alloy, a mixture of two more metals to improve the properties. And I've given an example, brass is copper and tin. So I've shown that it's an alloy and it's non-ferrous. Another thing to notice is here it says name and here it said name. There are very few places where you should just give single word or very simple answers like this. The rest of the time it should be look out for the words like explain, um, give two reasons, what they call command words that tell you what your response should be. They're telling you how you need to answer that question. In this case they're just saying you can name three. But here they're telling you you need to explain, you need to give more detail to get the three marks. Okay. Thermoplastic. Well, thermo is to do with heat. So that's something to do with, and if I've read through, I notice here that it says thermo setting. So there's two different ones here. This is why it's important to read through the whole question so that you can see what the examiner's trying to find out. They're trying to find out do you know about your metals, your ferrous and your non ferrous? And do you know about your plastics, your thermoplastics, which respond to heat, reheat, reshape, and your thermosetting, the ones that are set. Okay, let's have a, have a think about these thermoplastics. Okay, most common, and again, think about this common, you're not trying to come up with clever answers. Just nice, simple, you know, the plastics that you know. Um, polythene bag. I know about polythene. That would be a good one. That's a thermoplastic polythene. Um, 
ABS is a good one. The, the, the mobile phone cases are made out of ABS, acrylic butadiene, styrene. Um, and initials like that would be acceptable. Polythene is PE. And polypropylene, there's another good one. Polypropylene. There we go. That would be PP. ABS, you don't need to write out acrylic, butadiene, styrene, they'll accept ABS. So one, two, three, there we go. Okay, so now they're not asking me to name anything, they're actually asking me to give two reasons why saucepan handles are usually made from a thermosetting plastic. Well, I know that they set, they can't reheat and rechange, so it must have something to do with that. Um, to do with heat and flame on the saucepan handle, that's going to get hot. Now this is the point where it becomes useful to know about properties of materials. Okay, so this is thermal. So I'm thinking about this is to do with heat. If I've got my um, my hand on there, I wouldn't want the heat to get to my handles. It's about the heat being conducted. So a good reason would be um, thermosets are poor conductors of heat. And the reason this is useful is this will protect the user. Okay, so <coughs> I've got a property of materials, so I'm showing off my knowledge and understanding of the material, and I've got a reason. It's protecting the user from the heat. Now thinking again about that heat, if you imagine that there's, there's heat travelling in the metal here, if you used a thermoplastic, then that heat would melt the handle. It would it would melt. It would change its shape. The thermoplastics, sorry, the thermoseps are more resistant to heat and won't melt when used. So that could be a reason. And again, you, you've got the possibility of lots of different answers. You know, if you've got good knowledge here, um, thermosets can be moulded. So that could be to do with ergonomic shape. You know, they're, they're quite hard and tough, scratch resistant, so they would be resistant to wear and tear. And this brings us on to this sort of expanding our knowledge, having having a, a, a go-to place for our different properties, hardness, toughness, malleability, ductility, elasticity, plasticity, um, creep and fatigue, not so much at, at this level, but worth considering, and the environment and sustainability. So all of those would give you something to talk about when trying to respond to an examination question. And in the next video, what we're going to do is have a look at the next question and then look at this in a lot more detail.